Hey everyone. Okay. Um, in this video, I want to show you. Uh, I want to talk about an, an, an a special kind of extension for Pyravid that has really existed since the um, since we really created extensions for Pyravid. It's just one of those features that I really haven't talked about in the videos. Um, it has been discussed on the um, on the Pyravid blog, so I'm not sure if you have read those sections or not. But anyways, in this video, I'm going to really talk about um, in detail about how to create shared libraries um, for your tools in, in Revit. So right now uh, on this folder on my desktop, this is a, a, sort of like a temporary folder that I created, for example, extensions, the extension that we want to talk about in this video. And I've created a special extension called text. It's got a tab in it and it's got a panel and a test push button with a simple script that we're going to um, uh, write a little you know, code in. Um, right now it just says print that. And uh, I'm gonna, my read is open, that extension is loaded as you can see, the parent, the uh, Python tab and um, panel is created, click, test, everything works. Now, the question is, um, let's say this extension has a lot of different tools in it. And you have some functionality that you wanna share between all these different tools. Um, I'm specifically talking about a, a Python module. Um, let's say, the way you can do this is you can, in the root folder of your extension, inside your extension, you can throw in a directory called lib, which is a standard directory name for like Python libraries. And inside this, you can create, you can put a bunch of like Python libraries and stuff like that. And for this example, I'm, I'm going to create something, uh, more like an extended module, called, let's call it my company. And then um, obviously this is how a uh, Python module is structured, so you want to create a text document called init and init, and then oh uh, no, excuse me, one more time, init init the pi, okay, which is the initializer um, for that you know Python module, and let's say we um, define a function in it that um, special, well, uh, let's say my something, um, let's say, let's say you want a function that, um, uh, returns the users in your company. Let's say, I don't know, um, uh, return a list of user one and user two. Oh, what did I do? User two. Okay. Let's say this is what it does. So this is a module that will be shared will, with all the tools that live in this extension, basically anything that's in, in this tab or anything that's inside this extension. Um, so to test it, I'm going to open that script for that, um, for that single script that we had. And here I'm going to say import my comp. And I'm going to say, uh, let's say my comp, well, for user in my comp dot users, which that function that we wrote, print user. Okay, so that's that's our code. Uh, make sure you if you added it and you how you're running in a live Revit session, make sure you reload Pyravid because Pyravid needs to find that library and add it to the um, add it to the um, list of basically the system paths for um, for that tool. So when you actually run it, it can it can uh, the Iron Python engine can find that library. So let's reload this. Damn, everything is a lot slower in this um, virtual machine. But um, it does the job. Oh, what was that? Oh, it doesn't have an icon. Okay, that's fine. Um, so anyway, that's that. We click on it, and you get print of the user one and user two, which is the value that's returned, the list that's returned by that function. So as you can see, um, the tool can see those. Um, I'm sorry, can see those uh, paths. So let's actually go inside this. And to just make sure that you know everything's fine, let's do import sys. And before we do anything, I'm gonna say print. 
and dot join all the um, all the paths. So I'm basically printing all the paths that are inside the um, inside the sys module. So I'm going to do run that and see um, the path to the text extension library is the first one. So this is the first thing that gets resolved. So even this this is the first main. I intentionally put this in the first. So if you have a library that has a matching name with everything else, basically you can put it here, and that would override any other standard libraries. Um, if you have something that's custom, especially customized for your, for your tools, generally you should have, you should avoid using like you know similar names between libraries. Uh, make sure that the name of your library is very specific. That's for you and nobody else can uses it and stuff like that. Um, and then the standard uh, Python library, the side packages, um, the um, the Pyrite library, and then these these are the standard um, libraries that are added to all the tools in Pyrite, so they can you know use all the um, all the standard uh, standard library for Python and the Pyrite library and everything else. Um, so you see, this is really for with creation of that folder and reloading, reloading Pyrite. We actually add this to um, to the system paths for all these tools that are inside this extension, and they would be able to use those libraries. Um, so this is the proper way of uh, creating a library that you want to use uh, inside your extension and you want to share between all the tools. Now, uh, there are a lot of times if you are having maybe multiple extensions for your company, um, you want to have a sort of like a, um, a, a wider range library that you want to be able to share with everybody with all your extensions. They don't necessarily live inside your extensions. You want some, something that's really outside your extension. So there's this other type of extensions in, um, in uh, Pyravid, which are called, um, let's say, call it um, special, which are called, instead of extension, you can put lib at the end. And this is called a library extension. This is um, an extension to Pyravid that is really a set of Python libraries that are shared between Py Python uh, Pyravid extensions. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to actually um, do one more thing here. I'm going to copy this so I can have two different extensions. Um, test two, let's call this. And let's go and create a different tab in this one. And we can, because it's a different tab, we can keep the names in here. That's fine. There's going to be a test panel in each one of these tabs. So that's not a big deal. I'm going to get rid of this as well. Um, yeah, I'm going to get rid of this. Actually, let's keep it so I can demonstrate the differences. OK, so I've got two extensions. Let's say these are two custom extensions that you have for a company. And you have this special library that's in here. And inside this, I'm going to actually throw in a uh, Python script. Or you can do a, a complete module, shell um, module, and then let's pi, yes. And then let's put a code in this that says, um, who am I, let's say. And it says return um, special module. Okay, so if I run this function, it would say that I'm, I'm the special module. Um, okay, so now you've got this special library in here with special code in this. Um, when you reload PyRevit, PyRevit adds the path to this to all the extensions that ins are inside uh, PyRevit. This is really a way for the users to be able, just, just as you create like actual tool extensions and share it with people, you can actually develop Python libraries that you could, you know, could be used for in a, in Revit environment inside PyRevit and share it with other people. You can um, the uh, extension manager inside PyRevit. I'm gonna go here and run that. The extension manager recognizes the two different types of um, basically extensions that are available to PyRevit. One of them is called the UI extensions. Are the those are the ones that you actually have tools in them, and the other set are called the um, are called the um, library extensions. See, it says type Revit UI tools. These are the UI extensions. These are the ones that their the extension name ends with the dot extension, like that. But if you have a UI extension, if you have a library extensions, it would actually show you that that's a Python library that is here. So you can you could you could share those with people too. Um, and just maybe you have a really good idea for a really good Python library that you have to develop. It doesn't really tie into any tools, but you could share that library with other people so they can use it in their own extensions. 
Anyway, I'm going to read all part of it here again. So Pyrobit will find that extension and will add the path of that to um, all the other extensions as well. Even like the standard Pyrobit tools here, they will have they will see that um, shared library as well. So make sure you don't reuse any of the um, um, library names. Like you don't create a module that's called Pyrobit in your uh, in your uh, basically library extension because there's already one in the um, standard Pyrobit um, libraries, and that would basically create a conflict. So come up with like special names that you know doesn't have any conflict with any existing uh, modules so i'm going to let this read out and you can see somewhere in here that it says a library extension is found and the ui extension Okay, I think we're fine. Um, I don't see that listed here, but it should be, I don't know, um, it should be fine. So let's um, let's modify our tool. So I'm using the same tool that I had in that test tab. Um, so the, yeah, the test tool is also loaded. So the test tab, the tool that we had in there, I want to import that special module as well. So let's run this again, and then let's say um, at the end of this, we want to also print special module dot who am I, which is that uh, that function that we created. Okay, let's say we want to do this. Let's do a test. Okay, beautiful. So see, um, the the library the library folder that you had inside the extension is the first. Then it's the special library that is shared with all the tools, so the path is added to the system path, and then these four are the rest of the standard one that you know all the tools have, and then the result of the first function that we called from the um, from the our mycomp module that was inside the uh, inside the extension uh, library, and then the special module the function that we called it from this. So this is a great way of creating a, a library extension, a basically a Python library that is shared in, inside your company. And you can create as many different um, extensions that you want, and all these extensions can reference the libraries that are inside this. And this way, um, it provides like different separate um, folders and separate structures, so you can manage them easier, and then share it between all your extensions as, as well. Um, you can, you know, you you always know that you can also you know create multiple tabs inside an extension. But creating different extensions, really, if you watch the previous videos that I've um, posted um, about uh, creating and controlling access to the extensions. Um, the main reason for creating different extensions is that maybe you want to have, a, uh, like most of the users, access, have access to this general extension. And there's a special extension for very specific tools that you have that only belong to a certain group of people inside your company. And you want to only give access, you know, to the, the access to them for that extension. And that's why you will end up having multiple extensions, but still you want to have a library that is shared between everything else. So that's really the proper way of doing this. There's not really much else into it. Um, everything that I've talked about in previous videos in terms of like creating an extension. Um, let's, I'm going to actually open the PyRevit. Oh, what is this? I'm going to actually open the PyRevit. PyRevit extensions. Everything in previous videos that I've talked about the... Um, I'm sorry, I'm in the wrong place. That I've talked about this extension JSON that you could create for your own extensions and create like these extension definitions. Um, I've, I've described this on the website, but basically this is the type of extension that you want to describe. So for a normal UI extension, this is extension. If this is a library extension, this should say library. Um, so basically this is how you define the information about your extension that is um, that is basically a library instead of a set of tools. Um, to do this, let me actually see if I can copy this just to um, finish this video in a way that is conclusive. Let me do this. I'm not going to create uh, d definitions for these two. I'm just going to do one for a special extension for that special library, um, just to you know show you how it's done. But I'm going to get rid of all these. 
basically get rid of all these stuff in here. Okay, and I'm gonna keep that single one only, and I'm gonna say it's not built in. Um, sure, it's enabled. By default, library is the type, and the name is a special module, I think. Is that what we call it? Um, let's say, no, it's just special. Special, and then let's say the description is a special um, Python modules for my company. And then developer, let's say it's me, the IDs. Um, if there's a Git repository, uh, if you have shared it with everybody else, if not, you can just leave it empty. Website, you know, you can add those in there. There's not required. I'm going to leave it empty and, you know, and the dependencies and stuff like that. So now I've created that extension JSON file in here. So the extension manager in PyRevit now is able to, um, to see it. If you don't know about how this works, watch the previous videos on extensions and how to create the extension definition files. Um, so this tool is able to Hopefully, I, it's been a while since I actually created this. Oh, there we go. Perfect. Okay. So, see, now it, it's able to see that. And it recognizes that as an Iron Python library. With the, you know, everything else is pretty much the exact same as the other ones. The information is shown there and, and shown there, and the way you remove it and install it from the Git repository or other, um, uh, basically, um, online uh, uh, Git, Git websites, basically, like Big but like, like, Bitbucket or GitHub or any other um, website, uh, but basically this is how you share it. So this way I can enable enable it or disable it or anything like that. It, it works exactly like the like the UI tool extensions that you have. The only the major difference between these two is that that's a set of tools. This is only a set of Python tools that is shared for with between all the other extensions. So this is the way really to do this. Um, there's not really much else to it. I don't want to um, I don't want to keep dragging this video. So let me, um, in the comments, let me know if you have any questions or if, any, if, if you have any other ideas um, to add stuff to this. But um, that's about it. And this is basically um, the last type of extension. There are only two types of extensions that you can create for PyRevit. One is the normal extension and the other one is the library extension. So that basically, this closes um, everything about the extensions for PyRevit, really. Thanks.